Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Theo here. Today we're gonna talk about my experience owning this E46 M3 for the past nine months. So let's go. long-time follower of my channel you know that for the past few years I have several BMW in my lineup well my journey started with a 750i don't ask me why I bought that car it was a dream chest that I just you know decided to own once I achieved a certain goal at one point in my life after that because I saw that I was more like an old man type of car I decided you know what let's get back to the youth and I decided to purchase an e46 and actually that e46 was a 330 just like this one it was a coupe and it was black and it was six speed manual well after that car i needed a little bit of power so i decided to purchase the 2007 e93 335i yes that was my first turbo car and i loved it i modified that car i tuned it and eventually someday i blew up the engine yes that happened now, after that car, I decided, you know what, let's go ahead and continue that journey. And I did purchase a 2015 BMW 435i. Yes, it was a great car, but because I recently uh, just, you know, blew up my engine, I was a little scared of tuning the car. So I decided to keep it stuck. And that's kind of how I held that car for the longest. I also used that car to start this YouTube channel. So if you watch my first video, you will see that car. It was great, beautiful, and I loved it. After that, I said, you know what, mm, Let's get into the M. I went and purchased my first ever M car. It was a 2017 M3. I loved that car to death. But that car had so much power and I felt like I was never pushing that car to this potential. So I decided to go ahead and take things slow and purchase a 98 BMW M3. That car was great. I drove it, eventually had a crash on it one day during a winter time. That led me to this car right here. Now you might ask yourself, why did I purchase an E46 M3? Well, E46 M3 to some is considered to be the best BMW M3. Well, today with the G80 being four-wheel drive, I don't know about that. But before that, this was one of the best BMW that you can own. Because it is small, it has a great power, and the engine makes also a nice sound. That's why a lot of people, a lot of enthusiasts, purchase this car and also convert it to track car me well i'm not a track guy like that so i just wanted to get a car that i can enjoy on the twisties enjoy with my friends go to car mate mod it so that it looks beautiful and also use it as a daily that's why i went ahead and purchased this specific car the m3 is equipped with the s54 engine that you can see right here and that engine produces 320 horsepower yes in today's standard 320 horsepower is a bit small but remember this is a 2002 and back then this was a lot of power now my specific car which is this model right here has a few goodies added to it as you can see i have an upgraded carbon fiber strut brace here i have cold air intake right there and i also have different angel like you know carbon fiber front lip i recently purchased the apex r8 in size 19 inches i also have tent in the back here i have a csl style volsteiner carbon fiber roof although it is paint matched to the car i do have an aftermarket csl diffuser right there i also have active auto work exhaust i have active auto work actually no megan racing headers installed in there with the custom section one now this car makes great power and great noise as you can see right here i also have this oil catch can that is installed on the car so my car is not stuck by you know any means but it is also great in terms of suspension i have st coilovers installed in here and the car ride beautifully this car being a 20 year old car has its own share of problem now i've addressed some during my ownership and I also, you know, did find a few more issues after I owned the car. Now, the first thing that I've addressed on the car when I purchased it is change the control arm. I changed both of them and had an alignment done. At some point, I also had to change the SMG fluid that was that is actually located right here. I had to replace that. I also had to change the SMG uh, relay that is located in here, the pink one. I've 
you know refresh my vanos so i have a brand new vanos in here but not actual vanos but the internal you know that's a vano refresh so things that i still have to do i have to do the rod bearings and the subframe that's still one of the two big three that i have to complete on this specific car i also fixed the ambient sensor light that was on finally the last thing i've done since i owned the car was actually to do an oil change because whenever you purchase a car it's great to do oil change so i did complete an oil change and drove about 5,000 miles since my ownership but now the car is due to an oil change i never filmed the oil change that i've completed here so the next oil change that i'm going to do in the next couple of days i'm going to film that and upload it to the channel for you guys to kind of find out how you can do the oil change on this specific car in terms of issues since i've purchased this car i've had this light stay on all the time i took it to a shop to try to address it they couldn't address it so i just learned to live with it so right now you know i haven't started the car that's so why you see all these uh, other lights that are on everything will go off this is the only light that really remain one other issue that i have with the car right now is that um, i think i have to change my ac blower resistor because every now and then when i turn on the car put ac the ac is not going to work the fan is not going to run well the issue is that that resistor is bad so some days it works and then the fan will come on someday it does not i've ordered the part i'm just waiting for it to come and i will have a video for you to show you how you can replace that it is fairly fairly simple one other issue with this car is that whenever you lock it yes it only locks the passenger side so my door actuator is actually broken and i need to replace that yes this car is 20 year old so these type of issues are really things that happen with the car being just old so i have to change the actuator which is actually this piece right here it goes it's like a whole unit and then once you replace that it's going to fix the issue that i have here now that's a diy that i'm going to do but i wanted to do other DIY because my car is a garage car it's not a big deal right now so I'm definitely going to address this but that's something that I plan to address you know further down the line some people will say that owning this car as an SMG is a deal breaker to them if you have an E46 M3 it must be a manual well I don't always agree SMG will also provide you a lot of fun now remember when BMW created the CSL version of this car it was not a manual it was actually an SMG and SMG honestly is a manual car that is just being utilized with a pump that actuate the clutch for you so it's kind of like a manual so but that's a conversation that in the forum really you can agree or disagree but for me right now i love this car for the purpose that it is smg because it is an automatic auto manual and i use it as a daily whenever i commute to work it's great for me because I always sit in traffic whenever I, I drive to work and I don't want to have to do always the clutch first gear second gear every time you stuck in traffic now when I purchased this car I did have my 98 e36 m3 and that car was a manual car so I never missed out on a manual phone even now I have a manual car my Porsche is a Cayman S and it is manual and actually I love that manual more than any other manual car I've ever had that car is great and if you want to know a little bit about that video please watch out all the videos that I have about that specific car but for now let's go ahead and take this car and drive it a little bit engine is warm so we can go ahead and also rip it in sport mode really quick and see how the acceleration will be can shield me oh lord this is brutal <laughs> oh man this is good this is good oh no man I miss this yeah that's been a while since I pushed this car this way honestly I went all the way to 7,000 RPM before shifting gears. Oh, the reward is glorious. But I have a little bit of traffic in front of me, so I can't really push the car like I wanted to. So 
if you're just cruising, this car is very comfortable. The ST suspension that I have on the car right now, it's stiff, but not like too harsh. You can feel bumps, but I would definitely say that if you have the 18 inch wheels, the car will be more comfortable than if you have the 19 inch as I have right now. Since I swapped with the R8, I feel the car a little bit more harsher compared to when I had the 18 inches. Definitely not like my Porsche. Well, that would not be a great comparison between this car and the Porsche. All right, so as you saw, that was me just having a little bit of fun. It's about to rain, so I have to uh, make this drive a little shorter than I wanted to. But this car, when I drive it, honestly, I don't even check the gas mileage. So I don't know what type of gas mileage I'm doing with this car, but it takes me with today's prices about $80 to fill it up. I put premium gas as you will know, and gas is about $5. And uh, sometimes it's like 17 gallon to the tank. And yeah, it is fun. I mean, if you purchase a sport car, you really don't care much about gas mileage, do you? Well, I don't, but I don't drive much always. And most of the time when I'm driving, I'm ripping it. So uh, by ripping it, I mean just drive a little hard like I did earlier, but not to that extent. Should you consider purchasing this car to have fun? Well, I would say yes. Well, if you are looking for a car and your budget is about 20 grand, you can get a nice clean version of the E46 M3. As you can see in the back, I have the car seat and I can, you know, hold my babies in there easily. I can go out with friends. You know, people can fit on the back there, but for short distance. So this is a great car that could also be a family car if you have only young kids. Now, once your kid get to a certain age, yes, that back seat is not going to be great anymore, especially if they're like five, eight or something like that. Yet the back will be a little cramped for them because there's not a lot of room there. But I'm a short guy. I'm five, seven. So even when I sit on the back there, it is pretty spacious for me. Now, in terms of cargo space, remember, this car is a 2002, and back then, you know, car were not as wide as it is today, so the back trunk doesn't have a lot of space, so you can pretty put two, you know, suitcases in there, and that will be pretty much the max. Now, this can be used for short trips. I've done a lot of short trips, and I trust this car to take me to any places I want to go. Now, this car is lowered, so whenever you drive this type of car, especially if it is lowered, you have to pay attention. I have a video that I can link up there about how to drive a lowered car, so make sure you watch that if you don't know how to drive a lowered car. Now, this BMW M3 is great, and this car by far is the best BMW M3 that I personally own because I've had three of them so far. F80 M3 is great, it handles great it has a lot of power but for you to enjoy that power you have to be at a track if you don't go to the track and just drive on a daily basis onto you know public road you won't even use 50 percent of the car e36 m3 is great but i felt like it lacked a little bit of power yes you can have fun with twisties and whatnot especially if you have the car you know fixed and you have nice setup yes that car can be fun but if you take it to the track at some time, you know, you have a lot of people passing you and that might upset you if you are a competitive person like I am. E46 M3, I think, is the right middle, a right balance between power and handling. Because this car has about 320 horsepower, but it is not too big. So that amount of power is great. And mind you, this is a car that is not tuned. Now, whenever you put the supercharger kit, you can add another 50 horsepower, take it to like maybe 400 horsepower. And at that point, you have a great car that you can use at the track. Or if you just like to drive the car like me on the twisties, you have enough power to do so my Porsche came and actually has the same amount of power as this one but the only difference is that the power on that car is delivered more beautifully it's like a progressive power here it's brutal they give you raw type of power and you have to learn how to handle it that's also one thing that I love about this car I feel like this car is a wild horse that you need to find how to you know tame 
that's why i love this car i don't think i will ever get rid of this car and i plan to fix it to you know to the extent that i can and just continue to enjoy it so my verdict on this car is definitely a keeper if you are trying to purchase one of these cars definitely 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 get one thank you again for watching if you made it to the end make sure that you subscribe leave a comment about uh, anything that you've learned so far or anything that you like about the s54 or the e46 entry in general my name is theo and thank you again for watching see you on the next video bye bye